All eyes may have been on London's election at the weekend, but a hundred miles away, west of the capital, another race for mayor was playing out. And it was another success for Labour as Marvin Rees was elected to the top job in Bristol. After two rounds of voting, he won by a majority of around 30,000. He ousted the incumbent. Uh, he's a chap in the red trousers on the right there. He was an independent mayor, George Ferguson. So who is Marvin Rees and what does his new role allow him to do? Well, he's 43 years old. He was raised and uh, born in Bristol. He's married, has three children. In a former life, he was a journalist, so he can't be a bad person at all. And he worked in public health before switching to politics. Now, mayor of the city, he has responsibility for local transport policy, housing and local spending. So quite a lot of important things that matter to the people of Bristol. He'll receive an annual salary of about £65,000. And Marvin Rees joins me now. Welcome to the programme. Okay. Were you expecting to win? Well, I think the... Uh the omens were good for us on what we were hearing on the doorsteps and on the streets and um and i think that uh, we we anticipated that with a higher turnout we'd we'd stand a much uh, stronger chance of winning how strong a pitch because we had this period for a time where you're an independent mayor uh, and by that i mean independent of the major no party uh, yeah. no 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 parties yeah. uh is that been seen as a success or given that the people have returned to a, a party nominee was that an aberration? Well, I, I, I think people, a number of people came to a, a question what independence meant. As, mm. as Polly said earlier on, there is no such mm. thing as independent thought, really. Um, and then I, you know, I don't want to pick over the bones of, of my predecessor because he's been very gracious since, sure. since moving on. But um, I think there was an, an element of disappointment uh, between the level of delivery and the promise that was made that politics would be transformed. Mm. And, and I think... Um, Real political transformation is not just about abandoning political parties. It's about new people from a wider range of backgrounds taking up positions of influence. Well, in a sense, we're beginning to see that happen, though, aren't we, with Sadiq Khan's uh, victory in London and your own victory in, in Bristol. There, is, there are new faces to British politics in the 21st century. I think so. I, and and I, I think that, that does not pass me by. I mean, Sadiq, mm -hmm. the son of a London bus driver, myself. As he's told us several times. Yeah. <laughs> was your dad and a bus driver? Was you your well. dad a bus driver? No, no. <laughs> uh, I won't say what my dad did. <laughs> um, my, my dad was a, a guy in town. I mean, I grew up with my mum. We lived in a refuge for a while on a housing estate in a city. Um, looking at Alan Milburn's report on elitist Britain, mm. I shouldn't be here. Um, but th that's, I mean, and that's one of the reasons I am here, because I want a city in which that doesn't happen by chance or luck. But th it's the way we begin to work, that we begin to bring talent through from a wider range of backgrounds. I think that's mm. absolutely essential to our And politics. it may be that local government or elected mayors is one way of uh, doing that. Now, it's interesting that Andy Burnham wants, is thinking of running for mayor of uh, Manchester. We've got a picture of you and uh, Jeremy Corbyn. I think he came down to see you yeah. uh, for your, your victory. Um, was he a, an asset or a liability for you on the doorstep? Well, I, I'd say he was incredibly supportive. And, was, mm. and, and in terms of my own motivation and drive, was absolutely supportive. But, um, yeah, I mean, Brist Bristol's a, a very diverse city. And in some mm. areas, Jeremy had incredible traction. And in other areas, he, he, mm. he, wasn't, he, he didn't have so much traction. But overall, um, his contribution to my campaign was incredibly positive, And I'm very grateful for the support he offered me. Why do you think he came to see you rather than Sadiq? Well, I don't know if I'd take the question that way. He came to see me, and I welcome <laughs> anyone to come to Bristol. And um, I think, where would you rather be on a sunny day? In Bristol on College Green or in smoky London? How much of these elections, because we've had big, we see a lot of this through the prism of the London mayoral yeah. campaigns. And we've always had big figures fighting them. Ken Livingston, Boris uh, Johnson. How much of these was your election about you as an individual? Uh, and how much was it you as the Labour candidate? Well, it was a lot about me. And it was my frustration in the last campaign uh, with this whole thing of independence versus a party mayor. I never crossed the line and ceased to be Marvin, who has my background and has my mm. network of friends. I was a guy who joined the Labour Party through Operation Black Vote in my mid-30s and, and took up the challenge of getting elected to try and make things happen through electoral politics. Um, and that element of my appeal outside the party boundaries uh, was an incredible support. And in fact, sometimes it caused me challenges inside the party. Mm. Was I really Labour? Was I just a guy who jumped on the train um, late in the game? Um, but I, I think the Labour Party is about a group of people coming together around shared values. The values I developed in my upbringing are, are the values I, I found amongst people in the party and I can, I can rally with them and try and get things done for people who are being left behind.
Well, we shall see how it goes over the years ahead. It's an exciting time for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much.